Let's continue our introduction to Copernicus by looking at how we can use the tile pattern node. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. If you'd like to grab it, you can do so on there. Let's go ahead and drop down a copnet and let's look at the tile pattern node. This node is gonna be what we're gonna be using for anything that could potentially have a pattern. So things like bricks or maybe some fabrics or something, you'd be using this node. And there is a lot to this node. You can do a lot of different things with it. There's a ton of different settings in here. And it's not something that we're gonna be able to cover in its entirety in this video. So I definitely encourage you to go and play around with it and mess with it on your own. Take a look at the documentation and read through and just get a sense of what this node can do because it's gonna be used for a lot of different things in your, in your workflows. So to start off here, we have different pattern sizes. So if we mess around with this, you can see how that affects our final look. We have a different pattern type with some different settings here. So we have this stack bond. We have a bunch of different settings here, basically a bunch of different ways for this to generate a pattern. So you can select whichever one that you want. You can mess around with the divisions, which is basically going to increase or decrease your scale. You have these seamless, you have tile count. So you have some different things, some different options for how you want to generate this. You also have tile size, so again, you can mess with that to play around with how you want to generate your actual tile. Now you also have so the ability to flip this pattern, so that can be useful with some of these other ones. If you want them to be vertical instead of horizontal, then you can get some nice looks that way. Now you can also mess around with the shapes that we're being input into our our tile pattern. So we have basically everything in the SDF shape node we have inside of here. So you can mess around with it like this, you, you know, play with an asterisk or you know, whatever you wanted to, to use as your actual shape. And a lot of times you're gonna want to probably have this set to like a rectangle if you're doing brick patterns or, or something, you know, in that sort of a vein. Otherwise, you may want to input your own shape, which you can do. So if we type SDF shape, we can basically do the same thing, do an SDF to mono, wire this in, and then we can wire this into our stamp. Now we have the same thing. So if we wanted to set this to not a circle, but a rectangle, you see that we get essentially the same thing here as if we were to not have this connected at all. So wire that into the stamp input and you can get your own shapes here. So we could play around with this. So it's a little bit more you know, visible to your network as to what is going on if you have this wired into here. But you can also do some interesting things. So we can take this and we could make a copy. We could set this to like the squircle and then we could do a subtract and we could wire this in here. Let's do this into the foreground or the background, I mean. And then we get something like this, which is a little bit uh, more of an interesting shape there. And we can, again, play around with, you know, what type of bond that we're getting here to get some different looks, and create some really interesting, interesting looks here. So all sorts of different things that we can do with this. You can put your own shapes here so we could bring in something from SOPS if we wanted to and bring that into our tile pattern if we wanted to with that. Something else that I want to just point out here that I didn't talk about in the video on the, the stamp points, uh, I believe that was the node I'm thinking of, it's been a little bit, uh, but you can actually wire in a shape here. So if we take a look at the shape, let's pick something interesting like a marker, the asterisk will work. If we come to our tile pattern and let's just crank up the divisions, maybe to like 14, we wire this into our, or our point mask node. We can take a look at this now, and now it's gonna take the shape of that shape that we input into there. So we can play around with this, change this to you know, something else, and we get these interesting shapes. And again, if this is too large, it's going to just vaguely represent what it is. But if you bring this super low, then you're gonna to start to get more and more detailed in the shape that you're getting input into it. 
Now we can also do some other interesting things with this. We can, let's actually just uh, disconnect some of this for now and let's set this back up here. So we can mess around with the offsets here. So I have some different offset settings we can get. You can you know, slide them, and get some different looks with this. So we're getting some different uh, you know, breakup in the arrangement of these, which may or may not be what you're looking for. You can also rotate the pattern. You can rotate the individual tiles and get some interesting looks. Lots of different things that you can do with this. You can rotate the I mean, a checkerboard pattern. You can mess around with the orientation of the tiles. There's a lot that you can do. You can even control the individual size of these tiles, which is again, gonna be useful for generating things like brick patterns to get that grout lines in between. Stuff like that will be super useful. But I wanna also jump into this prune tiles because there's some other interesting things we can do with this and we can just get rid of some of these tiles as well. So we can mess around with our threshold. That's gonna you know, get rid of a different percentage. We have some different ways that we can do this. So we can just do random. That could be good for certain things. If you wanted to like remove certain bricks to uh, simulate something like falling apart or something like that, then you could do that. We can come to removing every nth tile, which is interesting as well as the, the rows or the columns. So you can definitely get some very interesting looks just using these and playing around with these different selections. You can obviously invert them all as well if you wanted to. You can combine these if you wanted to and get some even more interesting, interesting looks. Combine them and do some really cool things. You can also split the tiles. So splitting these tiles is going to just split the shapes so it's kind of hard to tell if i sp if i just lowered the split threshold we get back to what we started with and as i start to raise this you see some of these tiles start to get split in half and you can increase the number of splits so you can do some weird things i'm not exactly sure off the top of my head what i would use this for uh, but it's a good option to have nonetheless i'm sure that people will come up with some interesting ways to use this and you can play around with the jitter scale so that they're not all identical in the spacing between the splits. You can also rotate them, which is pretty cool. Um, again, I'm not really sure what all I would use this for, but it's good to have all of these settings available to us so that if we want to, we can use them. If we find a, an interesting use for them, then it's definitely something that we can use to our advantage. And then you also have the ability to do it based off of an area threshold, which is kind of nice, which doesn't look like it's working all that well. Oh, there it is, okay. Yeah, so it does. it is working, I had setting pushed up too high. Yeah, so if it's too low, or sorry, as you raise it, it's only going to have the larger area and the, as you go lower, it's going to have the, the smaller, smaller area shapes so some of these smaller shapes start to pop in so again interesting things that we can do with this tile pattern node there's all sorts of different things that we can use this for you're going to be using this node a lot so definitely play around with it do some just messing around with it not necessarily to to build anything but just messing around with the different shapes and settings here so that you can get used to it and start to see you know, what you can use this for. And that way you're, you're familiar with it when you actually go to use it inside of your actual setups. But anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. Let me know what you guys are using some of these things for. If you have an idea for like this split tiles, for what this would be used for, I'd be interested to hear um, what you guys think that this could be useful for. Cause I'm honestly, like I said, not really sure at the moment what I would use this for, but I'm sure that there's something once I see it, it'll hit me like, oh yeah, that makes total sense. That's exactly what it, it was put there for. So anyways, like I said, hopefully this has helped you out. We'll continue to look at more stuff inside of the, the new cops and dive further into some of these nodes and how to use them to build out uh, some, some, cool, um, some cool materials. So. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.